I'm Linda Elsieford, founder of the LDN Research Trust. It has been my honour to interview LDN researchers, prescribers, pharmacists and patients from around the world for many conditions. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce Dr. Stephen Richheimer from Los Angeles, the Chief of Pain Medicine at USC. Thank you for joining me, Stephen. It's my pleasure, Linda. Could you tell us when you first heard about LDN? Oh, quite a while ago. I'd have to take a look when Stanford published its first article about LDN and fibromyalgia, uh, but I think that must be close to eight years ago, and I guess when I first heard about it and started using it. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us for what conditions, which types of pain that you've been using LDN for? Sure. I use it pretty much for all patients that have a neuropathic pain diagnosis. And I include in that fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia, neuropathies, uh, complex regional pain syndrome, neuralgias. Uh, I think for any neuropathic pain syndrome, it is uh, worthy of a try and often helpful. Uh, of course, a limiting factor is if the patient is taking opioids. Uh, I want the patient to be off of the opioids before we try that. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a few questions I'd like to ask you. So if a patient comes to you with uh, very high pain levels of whatever condition they have and they're on opioids, and you just said that you'd like them to come off first, how do you get them off the opioids and how long do they have to be opioid free before you start them on LDN? Wow, uh, you kind of asked a million dollar question. Because <laughs> when patients are are using opioids, especially if they're using significant amounts, uh, it can often be very difficult to uh, to wean them off. Uh, first, the process of of educating them and convincing them that this is a worthwhile endeavor, uh, and then even once they agree with that just making it happen is very difficult. Mm -hmm. I have found using ketamine, uh, primarily oral ketamine, but also sometimes topical ketamine, is a very helpful adjunct that makes it easier for patients to get off of their opioids. Uh, but I still can't say that it's easy. It's still a difficult process, and we have to try to put together as many different pain management tools as we can, both medication-wise and also things like you know, proper physical therapy, pain psychology, et cetera. Every tool that we can assemble to help them with this process. Mm -hmm. May I ask, do you consider tramadol an opioid? So the name that's uh, getting bandied about here, uh, at least in the U.S., is calling uh, tramadol and Lucinta, uh, which is tapentadol, um, atypical opioids. So I do think they have uh, some opioid effects, uh, but they do other things also. Mm -hmm. I have used low-dose naltrexone on some patients who are taking tramadol, and with the understanding that the tramadol will probably not work as good as it did before because some of the effects of it are being blocked, mm -hmm. uh, it has been okay. It's still not my preference because I think any opioid to some extent is counteracting some of the potential benefits of the naltrexone. Okay. And ideally, how long would you like a patient to be opioid-free? Basically two weeks. But uh, I tell the patient that the longer they're away from opioids, the, the more we may see the benefits of the naltrexone. Mm -hmm. But basically, after they've been off the opioids for a couple of weeks, then uh, I think they're ready to at least start the naltrexone. Okay. 
And how long, I, I know these are difficult questions for you, but they're questions that we're repeatedly being asked. But how long would you say on average that people notice something that LDN is working? Yeah, so I want to make a dis uh, distinction between noticing something versus sort of maximal benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so noticing something, I, I would say many patients notice something within a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but maximal benefit uh, can easily be a couple of months. Okay. A lot of doctors tell me that their patients normally notice something around the four-month mark. Um, so if you've noticed great benefits sooner, that's um, pretty good. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I would go with past the numbers in four months. Mhm. Mm okay. And when these patients start LDN, do they notice any side effects? Rarely. Uh, I I've had some patients that have had troubles with uh, headache. Mhm. Mm um, Occasionally, I've had patients tell me that they have insomnia and they take it in the evening, which is generally how we start the medicine. Um, a, a very few patients have, have felt like it had some, some associated change in mental status that made them feel like a little bit, a little bit dizzy or a little bit foggy. But that's been really rare. Uh, I would say the vast majority, three quarters of the patients, uh, have no significant side effect at all. Mm -hmm. We noticed from a survey we did a few years ago that only 5% of the people that took part in the survey noticed any side effects whatsoever. So I think you're unlucky if you do <laughs> experience side effects, but we know there are a few people that um, do. And from your experience, the patients that you have tried LDN, um, would you say how many of those that LDN hasn't worked for? Has not worked for. Yeah. Um, well, again, it depends a little bit what, what we call working, because I mm -hmm. would say a lot of patients tell me that it gives them mild or modest benefit. Um, only a few patients, uh, more than a few, maybe maybe 20% of my patients would tell me it's fairly robust. Uh, I would say a lot of patients tell me it's kind of mild, moderate benefit, but certainly worth it to them and they're glad they're taking it. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of patients that have said no benefit, uh, maybe about 20% there too. Okay. And what about the number of patients stopping? I'm sorry? The number of patients that have stopped LDN who haven't wished to continue? Yeah, so again, that's probably about the 20% that haven't found any benefit from it and a few more, not many, that have been troubled by side effects. Mm -hmm. uh, so slightly above 20% maybe have, have wished to stop. Okay. Well, that all sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> Could you give us some case studies off the top of your head? Sure. Uh, one of my uh, most interesting uh, patients is a patient who has uh, multiple areas in the body with neuralgias that may in part be related to an underlying diagnosis of sarcoidosis. Uh, and one of, she clearly has, you know, autoimmune problems that, in, in terms of many different symptoms that occur. Uh, and one of the issues that was happening with her is that she would get uveitis, a uh, optic tract infection, uh, or not infection, but inflammation. Um, autoimmune-related uveitis, and she would get this um, once or twice a year for years. And 
she wasn't taking any opioids and was and, and, and didn't tolerate them and was struggling to try to find something that could help her with her, her neuropathic pain. And so I suggested that we try the uh, lower dose naltrexone. She was one of my early patients, so this must be seven years ago or something like that. And uh, she did. Uh, she came back uh, uh, probably two months later and was very pleased with the results, feeling that she was 30, 40% better, which was a big deal for her. Mm. And and we have continued the low-dose naltrexone to this day. And the interesting thing is, in the roughly seven years that, that we've been doing this, she's had one episode. Of oh, wow. Uh, and so that was really uh, opening our eyes to the potential uh, effect on the, uh, on the immune system, the you know, immune modulating effects of naltrexone, mm-hmm. and uh, really caught the attention of our ophthalmologist as well as us. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're, we're still trying to figure out how to apply that to other cases, <laughs> but, um, uh, but it, was, it was fairly dramatic. Other kinds of cases, I would say fairly often, I see patients, we see a lot of complex regional pain syndrome in our, in our center. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of our areas of specialty. And so typically we will see patients that have maybe failed to improve at, at the first level of pain care that they got. Now they're being sort of referred into the university, which is where I am, uh, to try if if there's other options for them. And so with these patients, often opioids have either not helped or sometimes made things worse, and and they're in pretty bad situations. So uh, one of the strategies that we use with these patients is again trying to get them off of the opioids, which sometimes in and of, in and of itself is helpful. Uh, using and then using ketamine, as we talked about, often combined with low dose naltrexone once they're off the opioids. And I can think of half a dozen patients in just the last couple of years who uh, hadn't really responded to anything else and are doing much better with that combination. Now, I can't tell you they're cured. None of them are. Mm-hmm. But, uh, again, they are in the range of 30 to 50% better, which, again, is in patients who have had trouble finding anything that helps, this has been uh, you know, a godsend for them. Okay. And I so uh, that... That's not been an unusual type of scenario. Mm-hmm. How many patients would you say that you've tried LD on, LDN on over the years? Yeah, I was trying to think about that, and uh, I, you know, I really don't know. I would say it's more than a hundred, um, but it, it could be a lot more uh, <laughs> because, as I said, I've been doing it for uh, for seven, eight years now, so it could easily be up at around 200. Uh, I, I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's really, really interesting, and anything that can help people with pain has to be a good thing, because if you're in a lot of pain, sleeping is difficult, and if you don't sleep, everything else is even more difficult. So that's um, really good to hear that you are seeing those results, even if it's like you were saying, 50% better than they were, that's still a, a big difference to the individual, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. Do you have LDN experience to share? If so, please email me, linda at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. 